You know, at the Explorers Club annual dinner in 1951, they ate mammoth. We all had a taste of the rarest mammalian titbit on Earth. Mm -hmm. This person tasted mammalian titbit. He did. We're talking mammoth was eaten. Apparently, the record is that they ate woolly mammoth. So probably that's true. What we don't know is why they did it and how they did it. What is it about this human compulsion to eat things when we come across them? What part of you thinks, oh, I know, I'm gonna eat that? If you're at all interested in exploration, adventure, and food, You've heard of the famous Explorers Club dinner parties where you eat all sorts of freaky things like glazed kangaroo or goat eyeball. Of all the dinners they've ever had, the most storied of all is the 1951 dinner at which woolly mammoth was apparently served. I say apparently because nobody really knows what it was that was served that night. The Explorers Club was founded in 1904, officially incorporated in 1905. We started sort of with seven Arctic explorers. Uh, they were all part of what was called the Arctic Club of America, and they started the Explorers Club. How does a guy like me become a member of the Explorers Club? Sure, so you need to have two sponsors who are active members. You need to prove that you have gone on some sort of scientific expedition. You do scientific field work, uh, and you support our mission, which is to explore land, sea, air, and space. I'm so fortunate to be here. I'm the archivist, the curator, and the librarian, so I never have to do the same thing two days in a row. So you're gonna now take us to the trophy room. <laughs> Come on in. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quivering. So this table right here is where they allegedly planned the Panama Canal up at Sagamore Hill. And then down here, hanging above this sassy-looking emperor penguin, is the mammoth tusk from the mammoth that they apparently ate at the 47th Annual Explorers Club dinner. Let me see if I can get this straight. Is this the actual tusk that belongs to the mammoth that was served that night? According to the Explorers Club, Stories, yes, it is. The provenance in the archives on the mammoth tusk itself is a little shaky, so I cannot verify that completely, but it is an actual mammoth tusk. All right, welcome to the archives. So in here we have 550 linear feet of archival documents. That is everything from our very first club charter to the minutes from our first meeting to the minutes from the meeting of last week's board meetings. Here is the actual menu. So we can go ahead and take a look at this. Let's the menu is on the back. So there we see this is everything that was served at the actual dinner. I'm looking at this, I see I see fish, I see chestnut soup, I see wild rice croquettes, I see green salad mm -hmm. in the French style. Mm -hmm. But I don't see anything that really spells out mammoth. Right. The mammoth is not actually on the menu. This is the Christian Science Monitor, uh, printed in 1951, right after the dinner. It says that the mammoth was turned into a stew, so that way they could sort of eat it. Because you have to think, you mm. know, if you are eating mammoth, it's probably got the consistency of, like, really frozen beef jerky. I see something here called Shalon Midas Cheduba. Mm -hmm. Clear green turtle soup au sherry. Yeah. Now, you're saying that maybe a morsel or some morsels of mammoth ended up in this turtle soup? It's possible. This is the only stew-like or soup-like item on the menu. And what they're saying here is that the chief attraction was a morsel of 250,000-year-old hairy mammoth. Mm -hmm. We all had a taste of the rarest mammalian titbit on Earth. They were eating mammalian titbits. They were. So that's why we can't just completely rule out everything because it is, it is very possible that they did actually eat mammoth. Personally, if I came across a mammoth, I don't, you know, extinct for millennia, I can't imagine eating it. Would you have eaten the mammoth yourself at that dinner party had you been there? I would eat it for sure. I could make a, uh, I think a spiritual point out of eating wo woolly mouth. I'm not sure if you've heard, but a couple of postgraduate students at Yale 
have taken this sample of that mammoth that was served that night that was preserved in alcohol, and they're doing DNA tests on it to figure <laughs> out whether it was actually woolly mammoth <laughs> yeah, right. or ground sloth. Yes. Which it also may have been. Yeah, yeah. And it could be either one. And I suppose since we get to make the history, you get to make the history, pick whatever one you want. We're here at the Yale Peabody Museum. We're about to go meet Jessica Glass and Matt Davis, the two grad students here at Yale who started this whole investigation. This is like a giant cabinet of curiosity. This is the only remaining piece of meat that we know of, of that dinner. That doesn't look like meat. It looks like a hairy bone. It's like when it's just meat tissue, there's no bone inside. That's yeah. not, oh, so that's like fibers of tendon of meat rather than, that's not hair? Yeah, it's meat fibers, yeah. not hair. Mm, I can't, you know. Because it's like, cooked. So, so did it, do you think it looked like this when they ate it? I hope not. Because that looks really <laughs> unappetizing. Like, that yeah. looks highly uh, unappetizing. We have no idea where there was fried or, you know, cooked. Oh, we don't know. So we don't even know what's cooking. This is the meat we got. So. <laughs> this is the meat you got, so this is what we're working with. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you're a paleontologist. Yes. And Jessica, you're a geneticist. Mm -hmm. So how did you guys combine forces? This professor was teaching a class on mammalogy that Jessica was in. He mentioned that they had this jar of sloth meat. And he said, you know, it's, it's funny that no one's ever done anything with that ground sloth meat we had. And he goes, yeah, they ate it at the Explorers Club. It's a piece they said. And I'm a member of the Explorers Club. So I said, no, that's, that's wrong. It's, it's a mammoth. It must be mislabeled. And he said, no, no, it says megatherium right on it. It's amazing how far this field of ancient DNA has come just in the past 10, 20 years. So if this is mammoth, we would be able to establish that yeah, based so on that. The good thing is there's so much work that's been done on mammoths. I can take DNA that's published online of ground sloths, mammoths, prehistoric cows, horses, modern day cow, and try to match and see if this sequence matches those. And that's how I tell what it is. It's hard, like it's a difficult challenge, but it's such a fun mystery that I feel like I have to try. And we have the techniques to do that now. Said like a true explorer. <laughs> yeah. I want to try to understand something. If I'm in the, in the Arctic, if I'm on Akutan and I go into this extinct volcano and I find a huge frozen mammoth in ice, I don't think the first thing that I'm going to do is try to eat it. Well, you're not a member of the Explorers Club. Is that, is that it? <laughs> it's part of being a naturalist or being an explorer, right? It's, you can say, well, the, the fur is brown, but another data point is what it tastes like. Part of it could be respect, too, to celebrate this great scientific work they had done describing the specimen and to, to pay tribute to it. Now, it says here, Megatheridae. Mm -hmm. That's not mammoth. No, that's a giant ground sloth. Giant ground sloth. Yeah, it says, this is the meat of Megatherium, found and dug out of the Arctic tundra at Akutan Volcano, Akutan Island in the Aleutians. It is probably 250,000 years old. This meat was served at an Explorers Club dinner, and this was Paul House portion, which was preserved for the museum with the help of Commander Wendell Phillips Dodge. Have they ever found a mammoth in Alaska? Yes, but they... not this far along the Aleutian Islands. Okay. Nothing's ever been found there. For the species that it's labeled, Megatherium only lived in South America. So for it to have gone all the way up to Alaska and escaped paleontologists looking everywhere in between would be quite I don't know, amazing, I think. I would say it's one of the jewels of the Peabody Collection, but it's kind of a forgotten jewel. I mean, it's been sitting here for years and no one's ever done any work on it. If there actually was mammoth served at this dinner, the way that it would have come to the Explorers Club would have been through Bernard Hubbard, who is known as the, the Glacier Priest. Today, there is no man better qualified to give you a true picture of Alaska than Father Bernard Hubbard, known as the Glacier Priest, a Jesuit explorer who has spent over 10 years in our great Northern Territory. Popular notions of Alaska are for the most part all wrong. It is the least understood of any United States territory. Its size, its extent, and its great variety are by no means comprehended. It is truly the land that nobody knows. 
Bernard Hubbard essentially comes forward and says, you know what, I know there's you know, a large quantity of mammoth off the coast of Alaska in the Aleutian Islands. We can find one, we can exhume him, we'll bring him up, we'll defrost him, we'll bring him back to New York, and we'll eat him. And that the, the, is, according the only to the story, logical conclusion. that is the story that has been passed down through the club. The man who organized the dinner and was responsible for serving whatever this meat was, was Commander Wendell Phillips Dodge. He was a playwright and a reporter for the Strand Magazine and various other magazines in New York. He was known to work in publicity and uh, he would build up you know, some uh, big excitement about stuff, right? That was his job and he seemed to be very good at it. He was an explorer in his own right, but he was fascinated with P.T. Barnum and sort of that fantastical creation that P.T. Barnum was so well known for, you know, the big spectacle of it all, the, the showcase pieces. So in his dinner, he wanted to sort of recreate that, you know, whether it be mammoth or sloth meat, that was sort of his giant spectacle. This is where Paul G. Howes, that's whose portion that is for, he couldn't make it to the dinner that night, but he heard all this excitement building about and he said, can I please have my portion? If I send in my price for the meal, you can preserve it for me and we'll save it in the museum, whatever it is. This mm -hmm. has got to be something scientifically really cool. That's essentially how that specimen left, you know, at that point, the Explorers Club annual dinner and was sent to Howes, who in turn put it in the Bruce Museum. What we've done is we've pulled the Explorer's Journal from uh, winter spring 1951, which details the 47th annual dinner. So in here you have the correspondence, which is titled, Just What Was That 251,000 Year Old Meat? So you really want to know, eh? I mean, yeah, we really want to know. We really want to know. Why did they say so you really want to know, eh? <laughs> you don't necessarily get a clear flatline answer. So this goes on between Mr. Howes, the curator of the museum, and Wendell Phillips Dodge. So you guys sent him a vial containing that meat. Mm -hmm. And his response is, is, is perfect. He says, you know, thank you. I wish to thank you for all the trouble you went through to appease my wild desire to mm -hmm. possess a fragment of this ancient critter. But I am a little bit confused. And he basically says, you know, could you tell me, is this actually mastodon or is it prehistoric sloth? And in any case, I want to put it on display, and I, of course, want to be sure to know what to put on the label. <laughs> Would, don't, don't you think that could be like an e easily resolved situation? He's like, just spell it out on this card. That for could me. be such an easily resolved situation, and it's you know such a curator move to say, what do I put on the label? And he actually sent Wendell Phillips Dodge a label from the Bruce Museum to just fill it out himself. But in the end, he actually fills out the collection card, the original, and that that one is based on, and labels it Megatherium. Here he does say it was sloth in capital letters. In his florid words, he says, it has been as hard as the Dickens endeavoring to put a scientific finger on the family tree of the wonderful old critter. Right. So they, he doesn't really know. He, he can't doesn't just, know. He can't just say it's sloth. He's saying, I'm hedging. Mm -hmm. It could be all these things. Yep. It could be mammoth, it could be mastodon. Mm -hmm. But our best guess is that it's megatherium. I don't think it was a hoax in the sense that Wendell Phillips Dodge wanted, you know, to trick everyone into thinking that the Explorers Club were really cool and, you know, this is some secret thing. I, I think it was like when you, you know, put a bunch of spaghetti into a bowl and turn the lights off at Halloween and kids touch it and they're like, oh, this is brains. No mm -hmm. one actually thinks they're touching brains. And I think that's what he did for the dinner. He said, oh, we're all gonna eat woolly mammoth, ha ha ha, you know, and everyone ate it, except I think no one got the joke. They just all walked home and said, wow, I just ate woolly mammoth or I just ate ground slot. What is it about explorers coming upon woolly mammoth, frozen, extinct fur? hundreds of thousands of years, if not tens of thousands of years. What is with the impulse to wanting to eat that? You have to understand explorers are show-offs. And you media guys, what you want is you want wild stories. You want big stuff. You don't want somebody to just tell you about eating grasshoppers, or well, maybe for a quick thing, but doing things that are, oh man, gets the press. Every explorer has that second job. And so they gotta be somewhat of a showman. The way that this whole exploration of what actually happened at mm -hmm. that dinner ends is science in all its divisions must form the jury and decide the fate of the, shall we say, defendant. So he's, he's saying, 
one day in the future, science will decide. Mm -hmm. And it, is that day today? That day could be today. Hopefully, Matt and Jessica possibly could, you know, get to the bottom of whether or not Mammoth was served at the dinner. We're going to figure out what this is. If people just assume it's a fake, then maybe we're missing that frozen ground sloth that's out there. Okay, so like when people talk about mystery meat, this is like the <laughs> ultimate mystery meat. <laughs> ultimate freezer burn mystery meat. I think Wendell Phillips Dodge would be exceptionally proud of himself and of this dinner, knowing that this many years later, we're still trying to unravel the mystery. Hey Adam, this is Jessica Glass. And Matt Davis. We were just calling to let you know that we got the results of the DNA study back, and it turns out that in 1951, the Explorers Club at their annual dinner ate green sea turtle. Yeah, it wasn't even anything prehistoric. It wasn't a woolly mammoth or a giant ground sloth. So if anyone in the public wants to see a piece of meat from one of the most famous meals ever, just come visit the LP Body Museum.